In this session, we're going to look at um, statistics for A2 biology. So a lot of statistics is based around significant difference, as they talk about here. And we're looking really at a significant difference between the means or the averages in a particular sample or two particular samples usually. Okay, so for here, you can see a sample A and a sample B. So you can see that the means are further apart in sample A and sample B in the top graph than they are in the bottom graph. You can see that the variability is less in graph one than it is in graph, graph two. So they're less spread out than they are in graph two. And we can also see by the size of the sample that there's a larger sample in graph one than graph two. So as I say, we're looking for significant difference and that's the key terms in statistics, that significant difference between either sample means or um, genetically between observed and expected results. Okay, so we tend to, we, we, we um, with statistical tests, you come up with what's called a null hypothesis. And for biology, the null hypothesis is always that there's no significant difference between the sample means or between the observed and expected. So always, you're assuming that the means or the observed and expected results are the same or similar. Okay, there's no significant difference between the two. Okay, the first test we'll look at, or the first test we'll look at is um, the 95% the, uh, confidence intervals. A few terms before that, the mean as I've talked about before is the average. The standard deviation is a measure of the variability of the spread of the difference between your actual raw data, your, your samples, okay? And the standard deviation, as it says, gives an idea of the spread. The variance is the standard deviation uh, squared. So again, that's, that's looking at a group of values um, and showing the spread, okay? So the standard error of the mean or standard deviation of the mean, you can see there is the um, variance divided by N square rooted. Okay, and that gives you the standard deviation or standard error of our mean. Our mean is known as bar X. Okay. Um, our first test, as I say, is looking at 95% confidence limits or confidence intervals. So with that, you're 95% sure that the actual value lies somewhere between the lower limit and the upper limit. Okay. Now with statistics, we work at a 5% level. So P is equal to 0.05 and the probability is 0.05. And that means that you're 5% sure that um, the result is due to chance. Okay, or, or in this case, you're, if there's a 95%, it shows that there's a significant difference. Okay, now in terms of your confidence intervals, that's your upper limit, your lower limit, there's the mean. Okay, so you're 95% sure, as I say, that the actual value is somewhere between those limits. Okay, so you can see here for this set of results, the 95% confidence interval is quite large, whereas down the bottom here, your confidence interval is very small. Okay, that's an indicator of reliable results or lack of spread within the results. Whereas these, they're, they're more spread out. So that's a, a lack or, or, or less reliability within these results, okay? Now, if there is a difference in the results, then there is no overlap. So if we take that upper limit there and this lower limit, there's no overlap between those. So that shows that this mean is significantly different from the, the mean beside it. Okay, whereas these two, there is a limit, or there is an overlap, sorry, between the upper limit and the lower limit. So these results are not significantly different. Okay, so 95% confidence limits allow you to test the significant difference between, in this case, you've got one, two, three, four, five, a number of means. Okay, so more than two sample means. You would use 95% confidence limits. To calculate those, Here's a worked example. So you've got the leaf length or the main leaf length of a sample um, of 20 ash leaves or so N is equal to 20. 
um, and the mean is equal to 60 millimeters. Okay, and it's giving us the standard deviation of the standard error of the mean is 1.433. Okay, now to work out our 95% confidence intervals, it is the T value, which we'll talk about in a second, multiplied by the standard error of the mean. Um, and in this case, you can see that works that out. But we have a sample size of 20. Okay, to work out the degrees of freedom to use for our T table, it's the N minus one. So 95% confidence limits degrees of freedom is N minus one. To work out the T value, we use the T tables and that's in your um, handout that you get in your exam, which has got your formulas for each of the statistical tests plus the probability tables. And this one, as you can see, it's the T value. So again, we work at that P is equal to 5% or 0.05 gives us the critical value. Okay, our degrees of freedom, because we had a, a number 20, degrees of freedom was 19. So we go to degrees of freedom down the side 19. At that 5% level, our T value is 2.093. Okay, so then we can input that back into a formula, 2.093, multiplied by the standard error of the mean gives us a confidence limit there of three. Okay, so it's your mean plus or minus the confidence limits. Okay, so our mean is 60. So our lower limit would be 60 take away three, which would be 57. Our upper limit would be 60 plus three would be 63. So if you were going to draw that on a graph, you would have your mean marked at 60 upper limit 63, lower limit 57. And then you can compare if results are significantly different um, or not. Okay, the next one, <coughs> excuse me, is a student's t-test. So this is when we want to calculate the significant difference between two samples or two sample means. It's calculated by um, the mean of one take away the mean of the other. Um, divided by the square root of, in this case, they show the variance square, or the, sorry, the standard error of the mean squared of the first mean, plus the standard error of the mean squared of the second mean. And we take a square root of that. So again, it requires um, a calculation. For this, our null hypothesis is that there's no significant difference between the sample means. Okay, so you have two means here. Your um, null hypothesis is you're saying that the, the means aren't different. So there's no significant difference between the means. Okay. Now, if we take another worked example here, we've got um, this is concerning egg production and toads. You can see we have two populations of toads here, A and B. Our sample size, so the number of toads for population A is 30. Our, um, Population B is 35. Now, degrees of freedom for the t-test is slightly different. It's n the number in sample one plus the number in sample two take away two. So in this case, you'd have six, 30 plus 35, 65 take away two. Our degrees of freedom is equal to 63. The mean for A is 141. The mean for B is 97. Now, looking at those, you'd think they're not exactly the same. Perhaps there might be significant difference. And the st standard deviation or standard error of the mean for A is 12.7. And for B, you can see is 9.8. So now if you input those into the formula, so you tend to use the bigger number first. So if we use um, the, the mean of one, take away the mean of the other. So it's 141, take away 97, divided by the square root of the standard error of the first mean squared plus the standard error of the second mean squared. So 12.7 squared plus 9.8 squared gives you a value of 44 divided by 16.04, gives you a T value of 2.743. Okay, so 2.743, as we can see here, is our T value. Our degrees of freedom was 63. Okay, now this is where you do actually reject or accept your null hypothesis. You're saying either your results are significantly different or they're not significantly different. Again, this is the um, T values that we can see at the top there. So student T values table we're looking at. Again, we're looking at 5% degree, five for our critical value. Anything to the right, 
if our t-value is to the right of that, we would reject the null hypothesis, would reject that they're, that they're not significantly different, and we would say the means are significantly different. Or if it's to the left, you would accept your null hypothesis that the means show no significant difference. Now, for this one, we need to look down a little bit further. So we're staying in that 5% row, or 5% column, sorry. Now, our degrees of freedom is 63. You can see here that we don't have 63, we have 60. Now, if you look down the bottom, these numbers don't change very much. So we can just use 60 for that. So if we draw a line across at 60, like so, our T value is 2.743. Now, 2.743 on that line would be somewhere over here. Okay, so we could say that it's to the right of that critical value of 2.0, okay? And it falls in between these two values here, okay? So it's to the right of that. So we would reject our null hypotheses and say that the, the sample means are significantly different. And we could also just going back up to the top to show the different probabilities. That was between these two rows. So we could say our probability is less than 0.1 but more than 0.002, okay? And that's what they have on that previous slide, is that our probability is in between 0.01 and 0.002. So it's less than that bigger number, more than the large, the smaller number, sorry, which means that we rejected our null hypotheses. So our sample means are significantly different or highly significantly different. The further over to the right you go, the more highly significantly different they are. Okay, the next test, the final test, is then looking at a chi-squared test. So this is one you would use with genetic crosses. Okay, so it tends to follow on from a genetic cross question where you maybe have to draw out one of the Punnett squares. Now, in this case, it may be that you follow the ratios. So you're looking at the observed results, which are the results obtained and comparing those to expected results. And the expected results should follow the ratio. So it could be three to one or two to one or nine to three to three to one, okay? Now, with the degrees of freedom for this one, the degrees of freedom is N minus one, where N is the number of categories. For categories, you can substitute the word phenotypes, okay? So if it was a three to one ratio, you only have two phenotypes in which case your degrees of freedom would be one. If it was a nine to three to three to one ratio, you have four different phenotypes within that. So your degrees of freedom would be three, okay? So in this worked example, this is looking at um, corn cobs or maize cobs. So the different makeup in those, so they can be pur purple and smooth, purple wrinkled, white smooth or white and wrinkled. So it's a dye hybrid cross. These observed results are the ones that are obtained, and these would be the expected results. Now, to work out the expected results, it's a, it, it would lead on in the question, it would be a nine to three to three to one ratio. What you do is you add your nine plus three plus three plus one, which gives you 16. Then you divide that by the total of the observed results, which in this case is 96. So 96 divided by 16 equals six. So the one is one times six. The three is three times six. Again, another three is three times six. And the nine is nine times six. So that gives you your expected results from an, which would follow a nine to three to three to one ratio. Again, our null hypothesis is that there was no significant difference in the chi-squared um, test. In this case, it's that there's no significant difference between the observed results and the expected results. So you're, you're essentially working out, do, do the observed results follow this nine to three to three to one ratio? Now to look at these, they look similar. So you would expect perhaps no significant difference. In this example, you tend to, you might have to fill in a table, okay? Um, again, the um, equation to work out chi-squared is in the statistics booklet. So you have our, our observed results here, you put your expected results beside it, as we worked out before. Then you have the observed take away the expected. So 53 take away 54 is minus one, et cetera. Then you square that number. 
So one square minus one squared is one, two squared is four, etc. And then you divide that by your expected number, these, these here. And that gives you, you can see a decimal place number. Okay. And then our um, chi squared to work that out is the sum of these numbers. Okay, that funny looking sigma, funny E is the sum of. So we would add 0 0.02, 0 0.22, 0 0.06, and 0.67. That gives us a chi squared value of 0.97. Okay, now if you remember the degrees of freedom is the number of categories or phenotypes, take away one. In this case, you have four different phenotypes. So we take away one from that as three, gives us a degrees of freedom of three. So in this case, we go to our chi squared table. Okay, again, we're looking at the 5% level, so 0.05. Anything to the right, again, you reject your null hypotheses. Anything to the left, you accept your null hypotheses. Now our chi squared was 0.97, degrees of freedom was three. So if we follow, draw our line across here, 0.97 would be somewhere over here. Okay, so it's to the left of our 0.05 or 5% value. So that would mean that we would accept our null hypotheses. So our observed results were not significantly different from our expected results. So therefore, in other words, it follows a nine to three to three to one ratio. Okay, and for that one, we can say that the probability is between 0.9 and 0.5, so it's less than 0.9, but more than 0.5, which is what they have there. Okay, and as I say, that means that these results, these observed results, do follow that 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, and we can accept our null hypotheses. Okay, hopefully that helped with um, the three statistical tests that you need to know for A-level biology.